بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم today إن شاء الله we are going to continue our series about dental anatomy at a glance today we are going to talk about the permanent maxillary lateral incisor before we start I just wanted to note that this series is considered a very fast review of dental anatomy aiming at remembering the most important landmarks and the most important notes about these about the tooth or the teeth now with the permanent maxillary lateral incisor we are talking about the right one we will start with the facial labial aspect uh, the proximal contacts they differ from the central incisor the mesial proximal contact is located at the junction of the incisor and middle third as you can see in the picture while the distal proximal contact is located proximal contact is located at the middle third the mesial incisor angle is slightly rounded while the distal incisor angle is distinctly rounded for the lingual aspect the marginal ridges are more prominent than central incisor and the cingulum is more prominent while the fossa is more deep also for for the incisal aspect the outline is ovoid and from the incisal aspect if we look labially we can see more convex more convexity than the central incisor now we will start with key notes about the lateral incisor the crown length is 9 mm and the crown width mesiodistally is 6.5 mm the root length is 30 mm and the chronology eruption at the eight at the age of 8 to 9 years and root completed at the age of 11 years now uh, we will complete the lateral incisor I want to note uh, some clinical importance of dental anatomy the first example is in the extraction of teeth as we know that the maxillary lateral incisor is more likely to have a distal curvature on the apical one-third of the root so this must be checked radiographically before the tooth is extracted as you can see in the picture right here the the uh, apical one-third of the root is curved so before we extract a lateral incisor maxillary lateral incisor we have to take x-ray if there is no curvature as you see here we have steps of extraction we will start of course before these steps we have to uh, separate the soft tissue anesthesia separation of the soft tissue uh, and luxation of the tooth then we start with the elevator if, uh, with the forceps if necessary we start with labial force and less vigorous palatal force then rotational force and the small labial incisal tractional force this is if there is no curvature if there is uh, curvature in the apical one third we will exclude the rotation there will be no rotational force uh, uh, so we have a labial force less vigorous palatal force and the small labial incisal tractional force another example of clinical importance of dental anatomy uh, during a class 3 and the class 4 composite restoration it is very important to know the contact points and the, na and the nature of the mesial incisor and distal incisor angles to restore the normal shape of the tooth as you can see in this picture the central incisor is next to the uh, lateral incisor as you can see the, uh, con the contact point of the central incisor the mesial one is located in the incisal third while the lateral incisor the mesial one located at the junction of the middle and the incisal third the distal proximal contact of the central incisor is located at the junction of the middle and incisal third while the distal proximal contact of the lateral incisor is located in the middle third so this is one thing to note the other thing we can see the the mesial incisor angle and the central incisor is a right angle while the mesial incisor angle and the lateral incisor is slightly rounded the distal incisor angle and the central incisor is slightly rounded 
while the distal incisal angle in the lateral incisor is distinctly rounded. Another example of the clinical importance of dental anatomy in endodontics, uh, it is known that the maxillary central incisor is more clearly more likely to have apical accessory canals, while they are less frequent in the maxillary lateral incisor. So, the most important note for the maxillary lateral incisor is the meso incisor angle and the distal incisor angle. Uh, they differ from the central incisor. Also, the contact points differ from the central incisor. Uh, and we noted that there is less frequent accessory canals in the lateral incisor. And we noted also that there is the, uh, more likely the lateral incisor more likely to have a distal curvature at the apical one third of the root. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video, inshallah.